we really wanted to tell the story about how you know the maker movement while keeping that wonderful uh, you know enthusiast uh, base is also breeding a new crop of entrepreneurs people are using technology like 3D printing, uh, like sensors, like uh, open source hardware, to make products, to make services, to make stuff that they can sell. I'm Mark, I'm the co-founder of CoLab with my wife Adina, and uh, we're in the fabrication room right now where we have a 60 watt laser cutter, a pad printer, a wide format printer, and a, um, a vinyl cutter. The reason that people would want to work at out of a space like CoLab is because it offers, you know, a place where there's other creative people and we have tons of equipment and tools and machinery for them to experiment with. If there's a way to kind of frame this, I, I look at the maker movement as kind of an open R&D, a, a, a source of open innovation that I think companies should be paying more attention to, figuring out how to interact with that. And what we've done is gathered that community together, pooled resources to buy bigger, cooler tools. But at the same time, we have this giant brain trust. So all these people know different things. Some people know about RC, some people know about machining, some people know about computer programming, some people know about sewing. So all these talents can come together so you can build cooler projects, so you don't have to be a master of all of them. But then, inevitably, bit by bit, we saw people who were going, wow, there's other people who want this too. And we see all these maker businesses growing up. And, you know, last year at Maker Fair, there were well-known VCs going around with their notebooks, you know, kind of going, hey, there's ideas here. Hardware, which really in many ways is the origins of Silicon Valley and semiconductors, you know, is, is making, is coming back under, uh, under new wraps.